the time has come to review the first Dalek story of the revival era. That's literally just called Dalek. How cute. Guest writer Robert Shearman only wrote one script for the show. Uh, he's done work for Big Finish, but has only graced the television world of Doctor Who once. I personally believe that this is a damn shame. But anyway, on with the review. For the concept, the concept overall is great. Uh, it's all about an alien museum containing, to believe, the last sole surviving Dalek of the Time War. Then this Dalek gets empowered and seeks something that a Dalek really has never you know, seeked before freedom. Uh, it's a great character piece for the three main core characters of this story the Doctor Rose and the Dalek. You get more hints of a claustrophobic horror, a personal favourite story format of mine. It powerfully reintroduces the Daleks for new audiences in a dark and definitely interesting way, and really does find a great way, you know, for us to explore the Doctor as well. I love the concept, it's simple but brilliant and gets a score of an 8. On to the writing, Robert Shearman does some brilliant work here, his characterisation is beautiful and he really creates some standout moments for the series. When the Doctor introduces himself to the Dalek and they have that full on conversation, it really shows how much of a rich and complex scene full of great lines for Christopher Eccleston and Nicholas Briggs is, you know, to work with. It's typically, you know, a brilliant scene you'd expect between the confrontation between enemies. The emotion is a high, with this being one of the most engaging moments of the series so far. There was a nice few references in the opening as well, uh, that stuffed Slitheen arm and the sad men head. There were some cute nods towards uh, previous parts of the series. And um, the involvement of Adam was interesting. For such a character with uh, so much potential, his start was decent, uh, he had a nice dynamic with Rose, but of course you know that didn't last long. Uh, I have one slight issue with one particular scene, that is where Rose is supposedly dead. I mentioned in the review before that I don't like being teased that a core character has died when we know very well that they are not. In this, Rose is apparently exterminated, and we all know she isn't. With these, cons um, with these circumstances, I actually find it a bit interesting and wish that this had lasted longer. With the Doctor believing Rose is dead, it of course would rile him up, and we did see some of that. I would have wanted the Doctor to believing that, um, believing that she was dead right until the end of the episode where he's about to kill the Dalek. But overall, a very powerful script shows that Sherman can write a good story. I give it an 8. On to the directing, uh, Joe Ahern's directing of Doctor Who begins here, he only directs for the first series, uh, he creates a strong and solid story I believe, everything moves along um, smoothly, with a pace that I feel is much slower than the rest of the stories so far, but you know, I do feel this is somehow more powerful than the others, it's not really an episode that needs high action and a high you know, pace all the time, mainly because the Daleks themselves don't move particularly fast. It's a little like a slow burn horror. I really always like the use of perspective of the Daleks. I think the design as well as the star of the Daleks perspective is always more better looking than any of the others, especially with that short close up of when it stares at Rose's face. You know, in comparison to like the Scout Dalek in Resolution, which the you know perspective design was awful. Um, this episode uses close ups well in comparison like of the Jodie Whittick era, which really is bad when it comes to close-ups, because they are everywhere. Yeah. But overall, Joe Hearn crafts this story well. Nothing overly standing out, but good enough for this story, and I give it also an 8. Unfortunately, the visuals in this story aren't exactly the best at some points. Uh, good points though are, you know, the extermination rays, they looked great. They looked believable and realistic to me. The design of the Dalek itself, realistic and believable, uh, even more so the true look of the creature inside the casing of the Dalek. Uh, but on the other end of the spectrum, the visuals seem to drop off during the levitation scene of the Dalek. That's when you can really see how this particular part of the special effects haven't really aged that well. I mean, you can't really expect much from it. It doesn't really, you don't really get to see much of it anyway, to be honest. It served its purpose, but to me this is the area it doesn't really fit as well in the other aspects. Overall, I give the visuals a 5. I want to keep this bit short, mainly because I feel a little indifferent towards the music. 
Like it honestly didn't make that much of an impression on me. I also kind of preferred the scenes when there was no music. There was an eeriness about the lack of music over this episode. The emotional scenes could really be presented in a more raw and authentic way. I also am not a huge fan of the Dalek themes over the years. Uh, more of a fan towards the Masters and the Doctor's themes. But, you know, like I said, to keep this short, um, overall I just give the music a 7. Cast in the series never really lets down any episode. Christopher Eggleston cannot be felted with his emotionally driven portrayal of the Doctor. He was powerful, engaging, and stole every scene he was in. It's what you expect from a more, um, you know, what we'd expect from a Doctor when he's faced with a Dalek, especially as we learn more and more about the Time War and their past. Billy Piper got some great moments to shine as a rose. Her interactions with the Dalek really made her involved in the main story. And, you know, she gave a very believable performance. She performs a great line at the end of the story towards the Doctor as, the, um, as he is pointing a gun at the Dalek. Uh, I believe she says, what are you turning into? She really adds the layers of emotion to this last scene. Nicholas Briggs, I kind of find it hard to review him. He's a great voice actor anyway, and plays the Dalek with raw emotion, mainly anger and often bits of sadness. I would fit, you know, I would find it hard to critique his work. Uh, it's just practically perfect in any role he does. Corey Johnson as uh, Henry Van Satin makes an easily dislikable character. He plays, you, you know, the annoying collector and you know a character of materialism as well. You hate him with good cause, and the actor does this well. He make, he's good at making you hate the character. Others like Bruno Langley as Adam Mitchell and Anna Louise Plowman as Henry's assistant Diane Gonard make great additions to the cast. I especially like Diane's character as she mainly did listen to the Doctor and showed herself to be generally a better person overall. In general though, the cast get a 10. The ending of this story is well written and produced. You get the karma of Henry Van Staten as Diane Goddard takes charge and, you know, disposes of him. Adam is given a chance to travel and you get the final confrontation between the Doctor and that Dalek. Shimon creates some great conclusions that shows new signs to, um, to this villain already in their first appearance of the revival era. But overall I will not call the ending perfect mainly because I still wish that the Doctor believed Rose was dead right up until this moment. Anyway, this mainly had a decent ending for the story. I give it an 8. On to the threat. The threat of course is the Dalek, and it obliterated near enough everyone. Loads of people died, which really shows how unstoppable this creature really is, which is something often missing from the modern Dalek stories, the exterminating. When the Daleks aren't being the evil mass murdering killing machines we know so well, I think it damages, you know, their representation and their fear factor, which is why this episode is so well made and, you know, it's received well by so many fans as it gives the Dalek the power we believe it has and, you know, a reason to fear for the characters. Because, you know, the Dalek tries to le is on the same kind of level as the Doctor, uh, they're kind of on the same wavelength. You get the line typically always, you know, scattered in through the revival era of you would make a good Dalek. Um, also, I think most notably used in Into the Dalek right at the end, you know, this makes the Doctor way more desperate because, uh, you know, it becomes personal. We get to see a glimpse of an, and a new side to the Doctor and therefore for us it becomes way more enjoyable. So overall, I give the villain for the story a 10. The direction of this story, I've always found it cap captivating, mainly because it's got, you know, the heavy involvement of the Doctor. It's got powerful scenes and really standout moments in comparison to the rest of the series. I love the use of the threat, the amount of deaths piling up always makes me feel like this story has kind of achieved the goals it set out to make, especially with bringing back the Daleks. I definitely find the emotional scenes in this episode emotional. I do like the snark comment from the Doctor to Adam uh, having about having a fight, which was going on the basis of what I was going to do with the drawing on, but I couldn't seem to get Adam right. Um, I believed it was something like, I could be in a fight, and the Doctor responds with, what are you going to do, throw your A-levels at him. Rip Adam, I thought it was a fun scene. Uh, overall, my emotional reaction to the story is an eight. Onto the likability, uh, this story has definitely, you know, 
a strong score for this because this story is very likeable. Um, I probably feel less attached to it than most of the fandom actually does. I find it this to be a, a common trend. Um, though this episode it does pack a punch, it's very enjoyable and does actually set a mark for the rest of the series. My praise for the story hasn't really changed, I've always seen it in the greatness that of the story that is, and sometimes many agrees with the general consensus for it, which is a rare thing. I give the likability view for Dalek A9, it's a solid story and so far makes a grander impression than any of the other stories of this series. Now to the calculations, adding up everything you get a score out of 100 and Dalek sums to a total of 81. This makes it the same score as the end of the world, so when ranking them in order I normally look to the boards of the likability score. Unfortunately they are both 9, so I'm just going to go from gut feeling, and Dalek trumps the end of the world easily. As much as I find the end of the world to be a fun story to watch, Dalek is a grander and, you know, generally a more impressive story and has kept my engagement for a longer time than end the end of the world has. Uh, so that's it for this review, I hope you enjoyed at least something about this. Next of course is The Long Game, an episode which I think is normally considered the dud of series 1, especially for the, you know, having the one and only Adam Mitchell in. Uh, you'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching, like, comment and subscribe for more. See you later.